fat, low oil diets. A lot of people who go vegan think that, um, well, there's kind of a debate. Do you actually need to remove oil completely from your diet? And as I'm doing research there, some people say yes, some people say no. There are people in the middle. So a woman who would know kind of all about this is Dr. Hannah Kaliova from upstairs at the Barnard Medical Center. And she is just a whiz at all of this. Matter of fact, just put out a study um, on, I will read this, a plant-based dietary intervention improves beta cell function and insulin resistance. Basically what it's saying is it helps with diabetes. So with that, uh, Dr. Kaliova, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Um, I want to start with just kind of the lay thing. So when people switch to a plant-based diet, talk about kind of the health benefits that they start to see. Yeah, first of all, people who consume plant-based diets live longer compared to general population. Uh, the life expectancy difference might be up to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if you switch to a plant-based diet, you prolong your life, and you also reduce the risk of all the chronic disease uh, that are common in the Western world. So plant-based diets reduce your risk of getting diabetes, getting coronary heart disease, um, reduce your risk of cancer, and reduce all your risk Factor, mm -hmm. risk factors, risk factors like they reduce your blood pressure and uh, blood lipids. Uh, so there's plenty of benefits and plenty of reasons why to go vegan. Um, let's. I had somebody email me this past week. I thought that it was a really interesting email. She said, "Chuck, it's a really great show, but I wish you would dive a little bit more deeply into the science behind all of it all." So I guess my question to you, not being a doctor, not having gone through the medical school, I have no M. D. next to my name. Um, on a cellular cellular level, what kind of starts to happen and how quickly does it happen when somebody eliminates dairy and animal products from their diet? Right. So uh, plant-based diets uh, always improve the efficiency of our metabolism. At a cellular level, uh, they increase uh, the function of our mitochondria, which are the powerhouses in our cells. Mm -hmm. So our metabolism is boosted up when, when we go vegan. And also, uh, plant-based foods increase um, the level of AMPK, which is an, an energy sensor in our cells. And if we want to be lean and have uh, an efficient metabolism, we want to keep this enzyme, the AMPK, high. And plant-based foods uh, have been shown to increase AMPK. So the, the AMPK as an energy sensor works like a fuel gauche in our cells. When you're driving, you're always looking at how much fuel is left right and this is what the cells are doing as well they're looking at their energy level and the AMPK is like the energy sensor and uh, the cells are very smart and they want to keep the AMPK high uh, to to be efficient in their metabolism and the plant foods increase this enzyme in in the cells so, man, the body is just it is a magical thing isn't it yeah it's amazing i, I mean uh, you have a built-in energy sensor i've never heard of it put quite that way so ampk um i'm sure that if you google that you can learn uh quite a bit more but this uh this time is kind of limited so the other question that kind of gets posed quite frequently is again when you go vegan how long does it take for your body to rid the hormones and the toxins that are found in dairy and animal products. I'm always amazed at how fast the changes changes occur. People who have suffered with diabetes for years, mm -hmm. when they go plant-based, when they go vegan, within a few days, usually we need to reduce their medications because otherwise they would uh, go into hypoglycemia. Their blood sugar would be too low. The plant-based foods are so efficient uh, that, you know, uh, we are able to reduce medications within a few days usually. Uh, and the same is true for blood pressure and uh, blood lipids. Within a few days, we already see some changes. 
Uh, and there's also some adaptation. So the full benefits of plant-based diets are observed after a few weeks or months after following a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. But I'm always amazed at how fast the changes occur. You know, the first um, positive results can be seen within a few days. That's unbelievable to me. Uh, what about like a, a chronic disease, like heart disease? A lot of people, they get diagnosed with that or even switch to the plant-based diet right. after they have a heart attack. Um, I think that you just mentioned kind of diabetes and, and how that measures out. But as far as, you know, cleaning out the right. arteries and, and getting all of that nonsense out of there, how quickly do people start to see the benefits in that area? Cleaning up the arteries takes uh, longer. Uh, it's recommended at least, you know, to be plant-based for one year mm -hmm. or so to see significant changes. However, again, it's quite amazing that people will experience benefits of plant-based diets within days. Even if, the, if they have a serious uh, heart disease, uh, their arteries, uh, it will take time for them to clean up for the arteries. However, uh, the arginine content of the diet. Arginine is a is an amino acid contained especially in plant foods more is, than is in that one of the nine essential uh, it's, aminos. Uh, it's uh, an essential amino acid, okay. and uh, it's contained especially in beans and nuts. Gotcha. And uh, you know, it's also it's it's important not only how much arginine you uh, you consume, but also how how much the arginine makes percentage wise from all all the protein from all the amino acids that you consume, and plant based foods. Uh, have a higher percentage per percentage of arginine compared with other amino acids and compared to animal foods. And this um, amino acid uh, will increase the ability of the blood cell blood um, blood vessels to um, secrete nitric oxide which will relax the arteries. So the benefits of a plant-based diet will be experienced within a few days mm. by patients with heart disease. Uh, within a few days, they will experience their chest pain uh, less frequently, right. and uh, they will be uh, experiencing the benefits of relaxing their blood vessels. I mean, again, such a quick turnaround, right. uh, at least when you start to see those benefits right. kick in. And I think that it's really important that we live in a society where it's, I want it now. And that's the right. great thing about switching to this right. diet is you really don't right. have to wait that long. Right. You see those results right away. Even if you don't see them on the scale right away, which weight loss, mm -hmm. rapid weight loss is very common, but you feel right. it right away. Right. More so in my experience with mm -hmm. any other quote unquote diet that I had ever been on. Yeah, it's very motivating. It keeps you going. And uh, after a few weeks, you realize you never want to go back. Yeah. That's how amazing it feels. I don't, it didn't even take me a few weeks. I mean, it was just like a few days, yeah. like you said. Um, here's the, the big thing about this podcast, low fat and low oil. And as I said at the top of our segment, there's kind of a, there's a debate. Should you eliminate right. all oils? Should you eat it in moderation? Right. Where do you stand with that? And, and what are the benefits of replacing animal fats with uh, plant-based oils? Right. So first of all, replacing all the animal fats with oils uh, brings you some benefits in terms of insulin sensitivity and in terms of your blood lipids. Mm -hmm. uh, however, people tend to use oils as healthy foods. For example, if you say extra virgin olive oil, that sounds really healthy. So right. people tend to just dump a ton of olive oil into their salad. And uh, too much of the of the oil may s may slow down your weight loss, mm -hmm. uh, may also slow down the improvement of your blood lipids ev eventually. So although replacing all the the animal uh, fats with oils is beneficial, you might want to use the oils with uh, moderation. We recommend to people with our in our research studies to consume only about 20 to 30 grams per day of, of all the fats from plant sources uh, in order to get the maximum benefits. Right. Low fat diets uh, have 
superior uh, benefits uh, compared with high, higher fat uh, diets. Uh, in terms of insulin sensitivity, uh, if you struggle, uh, two out of three Americans are overweight mm-hmm. or obese. Yes, that is and, true. And uh, um, it's not only about the excess body weight, but it's also about distribution of body fat. Uh, so the fat is not only in the adipose tissue. We only have a certain capacity to take in fat in our adipose tissue. Mm-hmm. Once we exceed this capacity, the fat starts overflowing to our inner organs, like the liver and the muscle. And the fat is stored inside the muscle and liver cells. Right. And in it interferes with the insulin action. After the meal, insulin is secreted from the pancreas, from our beta cells uh, in the pancreas to push glucose inside the cells. Uh, if we have too much fat in, inside our muscle and liver cells, the insulin is not able to open up the cells and push glucose in. And that's how pre-diabetes and diabetes occur. Uh, because all the glucose that's supposed to go inside the cells as a source of energy for our cells is building up in our bloodstream where it doesn't belong to. And it's due to the fat stored inside our cells that interferes with the insulin action. And and yes or no, I mean, that's kind of a, a blanket statement for all oils, whether, you know, olive oil, coconut right. oil, whatever the case may be. Um, right. You can even uh, analyze uh, the composition of the fat that's stored inside your body. You can even tell where it came from. Oh, and see, now that's another thing. The body, the body will tell, tell your little secrets. Uh, how would you, how would you tell like where, where that fat came from? That's actually pretty, pretty fascinating. Uh, you can analyze the fatty acid composition. Uh-huh. You can tell, is it saturated fat or is it monounsaturated fat from olive oil or is it polyunsaturated fat from uh, canola oil? You can really tell the source. So if you took it, my blood, could you tell me what I had for breakfast this morning? Uh, I I pretty much could, yes. That is (laughs) awesome. Um, A lot of what you were just talking about, was that from your study that was published in February or are these facts that you kind of knew going into it? Uh, You know, I've been doing research in plant-based diets for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm telling you data from uh, several of my studies from the past. And uh, in the past, we also analyzed uh, fatty acid composition in serum phospholipids. So we just took blood from our study participants and we analyzed the fatty acid composition uh, in their cells. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we could really see what they were eating. That's awesome. That is so cool. I I might want to test that. I might go upstairs to the fourth floor and be like, take my blood. Let's play this game. Please, please come. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll play a game. Um, I want to talk about that most recent study. So kind of the broad strokes there. What, What specifically were you researching here? Right. In our new study, we were looking at uh, the ability of our body to secrete insulin. Our beta cells in the pancreas uh, have a capacity to secrete insulin, which pushes glucose inside the cells. And when we are getting overweight and obese and are heading towards getting diabetes, Mm -hmm. uh, we're pushing the beta cells to secrete more and more insulin. It's a it's a higher demand for the insulin secreting beta cells. And this is not a long term sustainable situation. So eventually, uh, our capacity of to secrete insulin diminishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time when people are diagnosed with type two diabetes, about 50% of their beta cells are gone. Mm. They're dead. And uh, by that time, we're just trying to save what is left. Right. And this process has been thought to be irreversible. Uh, However, we have shown in the recent study that uh, it's completely reversible with a plant-based diet. We are not able not we are able not only to slow down uh, the. 
the impaired the impairing of the beta cell function but we're actually able to reverse it we're wow. able to increase the capacity of beta cells to secrete insulin properly again now when you were soliciting for study participants what were the qualifications i assume were were you looking for diabetics and pre-diabetics or what were you looking for uh, diabetes was an exclusion criteria oh, okay. we were looking only for people who are overweight okay with body mass index between 20, 28 and 40 so okay. overweight or obese okay and they had to be from the dc area in order to participate in our study classes that makes sense so uh, overweight obese but i mean i hate to use the term otherwise healthy but no other chronic ailments were were displayed right exactly pretty healthy people some of them already displayed some uh, signs of pre-diabetes okay but most of them were metabolically healthy. Now let's talk about uh, how this study was conducted. Um, as I understand it, you had the control group, which right. is in many studies, and then you had the intervention right. group. So compare the diets. Let's start with the control group. Were there any restrictions at all placed on their diets? Uh, we didn't put any restrictions on their diet. We asked them to follow their usual diet. Mm -hmm. uh, they were trying to lose weight, so they unintentionally reduce their energy intake mm -hmm. about to about the same degree as uh, in the vegan group. Right. So both groups uh, consumed about the same amount of calories. Uh, the 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 energy intake and the diet composition were assessed by three day diet records. Uh -huh. So the self reported diet uh, records have their limitations, of course. However, however, they are widely used in research studies, and. Uh, self-reported energy intake was about the same in both groups. Now, with the intervention group or the group that switched to the plant-based diet, did you give them meal plans or was it you have free reign to eat whatever you want as long as it falls within the vegan diet parameter? Uh, exactly. They were only asked to eat uh, vegan foods mm -hmm. and to keep their uh, fat content of the diet to 20 to 30 grams per day. Right. That was it. Two basic rules. Of course, we provided them with uh, books and recipes and suggestions and uh, um, some cooking demos and lectures. And we tried to inspire them to try new recipes, but we didn't give them a strict meal plan. We didn't tell them this is what you're eating for, brexi for, for breakfast and this is what you're eating for lunch and dinner. Right. They they could eat, you know they are, they were able to eat what whatever they 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 wanted. So again, going back to oil, if there weren't really big restrictions and it was just about mm -hmm. monitoring you know fat intake, mm -hmm. um, I I guess then that would go not just for foods that are heavy in oils, but any high fat food, correct? Right, you know? that's correct. Yes. Um, so. What what were the results there? That's that's the big question. What were the results? Right, um, people were quite excited. Our participants were excited about losing weight. Mm -hmm. The average weight loss was about one pound a week. Okay, and so, this is on the plant based diet. Exactly, okay. on a plant based diet, and uh, so the average weight loss was about uh, fifteen fifteen pounds within the sixteen weeks right. uh, of the diet. Uh, that's the average. Of course, we had also people who are losing 30 pounds within 16 weeks. Sure. But the average was about one pound a week. And did they increase exercise at all during this? No. Uh, both groups were asked to uh, follow the same exercise regimen as, as until now. It means if they were going to the gym twice a week, just keep it constant. If you, you know if they didn't exercise at all, just don't start anything new. Uh, did you find that the results varied at all based off of race or gender or anything like that? Any demographic inf influence? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, the group assignment was the biggest predictor of their weight loss mm -hmm. and of the improvement in their metabolism. So being in on a low-fat vegan diet had uh, real benefits for both genders and across race. Mm -hmm. and uh, is equal opportunity exactly. diet everybody exactly. wins um, what, what studies are you working on now do you have anything currently uh, we're still running the metabolic study for people who are overweight and we're looking in more detail into their metabolism mm -hmm. and also in the composition of their gut bacteria. We know that people who are lean have a different gut bacteria composition compared 
to people uh, who are overweight mm-hmm. and s- are struggling with their weight. And we're looking at the dietary changes and the changes in their gut bacteria and are looking at uh, these associations. See, now that that's another one. I'm going to have to have you back on to talk about that. That seems really fascinating to me. We did a, um, a show on gut microbiome. Matter of fact, it was our most downloaded podcast. Oh. So like you just did a home run in my eyes. Um, and you also, I'll bring you on pretty soon as well, if you're willing, um, if I haven't scared you off today. Um, you did another study uh, about um, the link between meal timing and uh, weight loss, correct? That's correct. All yes. right. So we won't spoil that. There will right. be no spoilers here. Mm-hmm. Although if you do want to jump ahead, that's all published on PCRM.org. But um, thank you so much for coming in today, Dr. Kaliova. This has been really enlightening. Thanks for having me, Chuck.